What is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about clear coat. I think that is the most requested uh, question people ask me is what I'm using for my clear coat. I use a couple different types of clear coats, but the one I've been using mostly lately, and if you're over here from TikTok, and I think almost all of my YouTube videos uh, that I've posted are all using Illumini UV. And I should say really quickly that this video is in no way sponsored by anyone. This is just a product I use and believe in, but it's Illumini UV and it cures via UV lights. And it's a one part, so there's no, no mixing. All you gotta do is dip the bait or brush it on, and then it cures via the UV lights. Now I'll show you guys my carrying box, my current carrying box. I want to build a nicer one here eventually, uh, but I'll show you all that and what I've got set up for it. I do want to mention also before we start clear coating, uh, here's, I got two baits we're going to clear coat today. I think there's a YouTube video I have on this one doing this pattern. Uh, I painted this one for myself. I'm going to be taking it fishing this weekend. Uh, but before I clear coat them with the uh, Illumina UV, I always spray my baits in, uh, it's Rust-Oleum, and this is just a semi-gloss clear. I don't think it really matters if it's high gloss or clear, or uh, a matte finish. But I always spray my baits in these because of the way I put my logo on the bait. And I'm going, and I have a video about that too. I'm going to be making another one here very soon that goes into a little bit more depth. Whenever I made my original How to Put Your Logo on Your Lure, it was one of my early videos, and I don't think I explained it very well. So I'm gonna do another one. Uh, on that very soon but I always spray my baits in a thin coat of this just to kind of help protect the bait I have not really had a reason to dip or since I put my logo on every bait I've never not dipped it without spraying it with this prior to that I do recommend doing that if, if you're gonna put your logo on the way that I do uh, but that's a different video and I'm gonna be redoing it with some new new things added on to that um, but let's go ahead and get into clear cutting these this should be a quick and simple video and I'm gonna flip the camera around and you guys can watch me clear coat it. We're gonna clear coat two square bills and then I've got a, uh, a wood bait that I'm gonna show you how I brush those on, clear coat on those as well. Something else I had forgot to mention a minute ago was I'm no longer using this can. I had used enough of the clear coat that it was too shallow into the jar for me to dip some of my bigger baits in it. And since it cures via UV lights, you don't want this exposed to any sunlight since the sunlight produces UV lights. Uh, so it's really important that this doesn't go into a clear jar because you know sunlight coming in through the windows and stuff like that could have eventually uh, affect the clear coat. So since it was too shallow in that, what I did was took, it's a really old uh, Jiffy jar and I spray painted it black, but since the spray paint doesn't adhere to glass very well, I just wrapped it in black electrical tape and then just have a little Ziploc bag I change out every so often just to kind of help seal it in there. So if you are going to be using this, make sure you don't open up your whole can outside or maybe if you're doing it in your garage or something like that, you don't, you don't want it exposed to UV lights or it will cure and make the clear coat cure and harden inside of itself. Now, I've never intentionally left a bait out for an extended period of time, but it shouldn't cure without the UV lights. I've, ha I've accidentally left them out for over a half hour, 45 minutes or so, stuck them in the curing box and they cured just fine. But uh, again, I don't know that's something, you, you cannot dip it and just let it dry. It's not like that, it has to have UV lights to cure it. So you could probably dip it and hang it outside and that would do it. Uh, I like using it in my curing box just so it's a consistent uh, curing rate every single time. Now, let's go ahead and clear coat these baits. Here's the current setup I have for my drip dry method is what I like to call it. It's very rough, made out of scrap wood. I'm like, I would like to be able to build a nicer one and whenever I do that, of course I'll be making a YouTube video about it. But my method here is I dip the bait into the jar and I let most of the access run off because this clear coat is rather expensive. Uh, so I try to save as much of it as I can. So then I'll hang it over there and I'll show all, I will show all that to you guys here in a second. I just wanted you guys to kind of see it because once I set the tripod down, uh, I won't be able to move it around as easily. And then what I like to do on my wood bait, since there's not really a good spot to hang a bait from, I like to use the Zacto knife handles, I guess would be the correct, the correct thing. The Zacto knife handles with a nail sticking in it and it holds the bait. And so I just brush it on. I do it real thin. That way it, I don't have to worry about anything dripping off of it. But I'm going to go ahead and set this camera down and we will dip the bait. In the winter time, whenever this clear coat gets really cold, even though it's in my house, my house is very cold during the winter, uh, it is important to warm up your clear coat. And whenever I do that, I just put the whole jar inside of a bag and then set it down in some warm water for a while. It'll kind of warm up the clear coat and make the viscosity of it a lot thinner so it runs off better. 
this time of year it's warm enough in my house I don't have to worry about doing that uh, but all I do is just dip her down in there I'll try to get a better angle shot on the other bait uh, that way you guys can see her going in and then I just hang her back up and let all that access uh, run off it's a little bit difficult with a camera between you and the bait but that's all it is as soon as it gets done running as you can see it coming down right there once it's done doing that if you guys have watched any other clear coating videos on different baits uh, I'll put a little paper clip on there and it'll help pull off the rest of it as a matter of fact I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now I think this one's long enough I can get her in there without uh, too much of a mess there we go and of course there's a hair on it okay and that, uh, the paper clip helps the clear coat just to run off the bait. And then what I like to do is I like to let them sit for about 10 or 15 minutes or until it quits dripping, depending on however long it would be. Again, if the clear coat was a lot warmer, it would be thinner and run off faster. But that's all that I do. And while it's still dripping, especially if I'm clear coating a lot of baits, I don't like to sit there and wait that long for it to stop dripping. So that's why I hang it over there on the other part for that purpose exactly. So here's the other bait. We've got, I'm going to try to do this without shaking the camera too much here. I just dip them down in there and I slowly pull it back off. There we go, nice and shiny. You can see it all running off right there. And this one's getting down to the point of just dripping. So it's pretty well once they stop dripping is when I put them in the curing box. And then you do have to be, make sure, I know on my smaller square bills, or you can kind of see it right there, uh, the clear coat is inside the eyelet. And I'll show you guys here uh, once it's done dripping exactly how I clean those out. And sometimes the clear coat will still fill up that bottom eyelet. If it does it on this round, that would actually be really good because then I can show you exactly how I clean them. Uh, but we'll cross that road once we get to it. I'm going to let these bad boys keep dripping, and then I will bring you guys back when it's time for the next step. Almost forgot that I had these to clear coat, the wood bait. So what I do with these is I, I'm using, I think they're called acid brushes, and I think they use them uh, not for soldering, but like the pipe. I can't think of what that's called. The flux, I think is maybe what it's called. Someone out there is probably cringing because they know exactly what it is. But you can get these at Harbor Freight. I think it's like 50 of them for less than $5 or right at $5. But these are perfect for me as a throwaway brush. I always pull on the end and pull out any loose bris bristles that are on there because that really sucks, especially whenever you have a nice bait that you've worked on a long time. Uh, but all I do is just brush them on, and I do it pretty thin. That way we don't have to worry about it pulling up on one side. And then I always, if I can, choose the inside of the bait where it's connected. That way, if it does pull up, pull up on the bait, then it's on the inside where no one's going to really see it. But this is just as simple as brushing it on, making sure I got every area covered. And it usually, uh, I don't know what the correct word is for it, not pulls up, but it'll, uh, the brush strokes go away. I don't know how the correct terminology for that. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about the brush strokes. But that's really all that I do. And then I'll kind of just rotate it by hand just a little bit. And then usually after I clear coat the second half of the bait, or if I'm doing more, I'll come back. Make sure there wasn't any spots that I missed. And this is where also really good lighting helps, or if you have some bright light, uh, to see if you missed any spots. Now whenever I do my baits, I always just do one coat on them. I've never really had a need to do two coats. And it seems like it holds up really well. I mean, just like any bait or one that you'd buy at the store, you know, if you smack it off some rocks or once you start catching some fish, it's going to get some scratches on it. Uh, but it seems like it's been holding up extremely well for me. I've had some baits I clear coated last year that I caught quite a few fish on and the paint still looks good. So that's why I, uh, I think it's worth spending the extra money, especially if, for me if I'm selling them. I want to make sure it's a clear coat that's going to hold up uh, really good for whoever purchased the bait too. I don't want it to rip off the first time they catch a fish. Uh, but that's uh, this this wood bait is a pretty rough one. I, I made it rather quickly last night because I'm gonna, trying to take it on this little trip I'm going on this weekend to do some fishing. Uh, but this will be another pattern that I'll have available and a video to go with it for you guys at home to build your own bait. These are really close to being done dripping. 
Uh, so we will give them a few more minutes here and then I'll show you guys how I clean out the eyelet. Okay, so I'm hoping that you guys will be able to see this good. Uh, I would like to have a different camera angle, but I can't hold it and uh, do what I'm about to do at the same time. So I pulled out the little paper clip at the bottom and I've just got a paper clip here bent. All I do is I put it through that eyelet and it puts all that extra, you can see it. Oh, this is difficult, sorry. You can see all that extra clear coat that was in the eyelet came off on the paper clip, and I just wipe it off. And I'll just kind of do that a couple times or as necessary. Uh, these have been dripping for about 10 minutes, and I think that's all they need. Uh, again, if depending on the temperature or you know the viscosity, I already said that word, but that's a good word for it, of your clear coat, uh, that's about how long I typically do it. This top one is a little bit more of a pain with that other paper clip we have in there holding it. But I just kind of push it through, get whatever's on the paper clip on there, and then wipe it off with a paper towel. Slightly different camera angle, so hopefully this works better. Wipe it off, and that pretty well, if you can see it, uh, clears out that eyelet. Like I had said earlier, sometimes the clear coat will still drip down in there, or like it's already done on this uh, white one. That to me says I haven't quite let them drip long enough if it's filling back up that fast. Whereas this one, the belly eyelet and the top eyelet are already pretty well clear. So I need to let that white one drip a little bit longer. But let's uh, let's go talk about the curing box. Sorry, the lighting isn't as nice in this room, but this is my curing box setup. I've got two different black lights, one on one side and one on the other, and then uh, some boards going across as you can see diagonally. That way I can hang baits and they can all get the even amount of uh, lighting. What I do like to do when I get ready to start clear coating is turn these on and kind of let them warm up a little bit. Also disclaimer, UV black lights are really bad for your eyes, so try not to look at them uh, if you do have this set up. So what I've got going on, these are cheap black lights I just picked up off of Amazon. Now the website where you can order the Illumina UV from, I'll leave that linked below and I'll also leave a video that they have on YouTube linked below. They sell some lights that'll cure the baits in a matter of a few seconds, whereas these take a couple of hours. What I do is I'll hang the baits in there. We can do this one for example. I was doing a, a test clear coat a while back, but I will uh, hang the bait one way like that, let them sit for about an hour, and then I'll flip it over the other side. That way uh, we've got even amount on both sides. And the inside is lined with aluminum foil to kind of help reflect and make all the UV lights bounce off of each other. Hitting the bait in the top, like I had said, it's a very rough box. The top is just cardboard, uh, but I'll lay it down on there and that keeps all the stuff trapped inside there. I'm going to be building, hopefully soon, a better box. I want an actual nice hinged latch and stuff like that. Uh, but I'll go ahead and go grab those baits. We'll put these bad boys in here for a couple of hours. And then uh, we'll take a gander at what they look like. We had both baits in there for a couple of hours. If I'm in a rush for the bait, then I'll do just about two hours. If it's like a bait I'm trying to take to go fishing uh, later that day or something like that. I'll do a minimum of two hours just to be safe. If they're baits, I painted a whole bunch of them and I have time, then I'll just go and let them sit in overnight. I figured the longer the curing time, the better. Uh, but here's how both of them turned out. I will flip the camera around and get a better close-up shot for you guys. But the shad one turned out perfectly. There was really nothing dripped down that bottom eyelet. But thankfully, I've never said this before, thankfully this bottom one got a little bit of clear coat in that bottom eyelet. So I'm going to flip the camera back around and I will show you guys how I clean that out. And then, uh, then you got everything that I know how to do with the clear coat. So there you can see we got some clear coat in the bottom of the eyelet. All that I'll do is take a Zacto knife and just kind of cut it on both sides. And this stuff is pretty, uh, pretty hard, so I take a couple of passes. I've seen some guys will drill out the eyelets. I've never really messed with that. This method always seems to have worked pretty good for me. And then just put the blade through. I definitely like it better when you don't have to do this. <laughs> and it pushes right out. So there we go, That it's pretty simple. I'll go in and uh, clean it up just a little bit more. 
it's a bait I'm selling or something like that just to make sure she she looks nice and pretty but there you have it nice and clear coated uh, we also got the the little shad the wood ones clear coated turned out pretty good I'm gonna finish putting that one together and take it fishing uh, later this week as well I hope I was able to explain everything clear enough and that this video will be able to help out some of you guys that are considering using the uh, UV clear coat. I know there are other brands of the UV clear coat. I haven't uh, experimented with any of those yet, uh, but this is the one I do like. Like I said, I will be leaving their website and stuff linked below. It's not sponsored or anything like that. I've just a uh, product I believe in. Uh, another clear coat that I would recommend, I'm gonna do a video on it also here soon. Uh, for I would say I mean I still use it of course and it's just a dip a dip and let dry and that's clear diamond KBS uh, I can leave a link to that as well but this one you just do everything we did you dip the bait but you just let it hang and dry it doesn't need any curing lights or anything like that and I've had pretty good luck with this too this one's a lot easier if you ha don't have enough room for a curing box or maybe you're just starting off uh, but I definitely say a good clear coat is worth it, especially if you put a lot of time and effort into your paint job or your bait. Uh, it would be worth it to spend a little bit extra money to get some good clear coat. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you later. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. Peace.